What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and we have a fun welding and metal fabrication project to do today. It's a real simple project. With spring here, my wife and I went out shopping this weekend to look for a yard edger. And what an edger does, if you're not familiar, is it pushes in along like the edge of your driveway or your flower beds or your sidewalks and just makes a nice clear crisp line between your edging and your lawn. And I'm not much of an artist, but it looks something like this. There's a little metal piece at the bottom you know, that's a sharpened edge right there and it just pushes in along the edge of your flower beds. It has a handle and it can either have like a little D-ring up here or a little piece across. Well, when I saw that they wanted $40 for this tool and I could actually take the metal and bend it at the very end because it was just so thin, when they wanted 40 bucks for that, I thought, no way. We can do this and we can do it better and probably for next to nothing considering I have a welding channel and a bunch of scrap metal. So let's get going. And this project is going to allow me to try out a brand new tool that I just picked up. It's a 55 amp plasma cutter. This is the Cut 55 DS. As it shows, it's a 110, 220 volt. It's fully digital and it's an inverter plasma cutter. So you don't have to do anything. This is the cord that comes on it. Here in the United States, that's just a standard, you know, 110 volt plug. And then it comes with the universal welder adapter plug which looks like that so we have 220 in the shop so we are going to run it on that and the directions say this will cut any conductive metal like low carbon steel stainless steel and aluminum up to 20 millimeters so at its full rated output on 220 volts cutting at 55 amps it'll cut just over three quarters of an inch thick material now, if you're wondering what it'll cut when it's on 110 volts, that'll allow you to go up to 35 amps. So if you're plugged into a 110 receptacle, you can cut up to 35 amps and 55 amps, as I just said, on 220. Well, what does that equate to in material thickness? Well, I have a chart that I'm going to show you a still of here and give you a link to it. But this is eighth inch metal right here. And that chart says that we should be setting our machine for 30 amps with 40 PSI of air to cut this. So it'll easily cut that material on 110 volts, but we're set up for 220, so that's how we're gonna cut it. We're gonna have to trace out a shape onto this eighth inch plate. And then what we'll do is we'll cut it out with a plasma cutter and then we'll have to put a sharpened edge on it. And then we'll notch out a piece of this one inch black iron pipe. And then we'll slide that over this, weld it all up. It should be pretty simple and it should be pretty fun. I've been searching around my workshop as to what I could use for a radius on this and I came up with this uh, skillet. And this is the one that kind of originally started out our cast iron repair series. I tried a paint can and a paint can was just a little too small for what I thought. So uh, we're going to use this and see how this works. I think this will work pretty good. So I don't want those little ears there. So. We'll end up doing something like that. And we'll do something like this here. Yeah, I like that. That'll work just fine. That'll be our shape. But before we get too far into this, let's go over this plasma cutter so I can show you a few features and get some of you up to speed that may not know a lot about plasma cutters of the basic principles of how they work. So on the back of the machine, you have an air regulator that all comes with this in a kit. And then you just add your air source. You'll need to add your own air fitting. That's something that you'll have to add to the regulator, but then you just attach your regular air source to it. Now I get asked this a lot. How big of an air compressor do you need to run a plasma cutter? Well, what I have is a really old model crack it's a five horsepower horizontal 30 gallon that easily keeps up to this now it doesn't take a lot of volume to run this and it'll run for a long time but I just couldn't cut for like days with this it would end up you know needing to recharge the air compressor so I do have a pancake compressor which is just a little small uh, port cable compressor and that will run on this as well you just can't cut as long so instead of cutting you know maybe for three or four minutes at a time you may have to stop your cut let your air compressor rejuvenate and then once it rejuvenates then you can 
continue cutting. So uh, I don't think there is a maximum size that you need for this. If you have an air compressor and you hook it up to this and it can be one of those little air compressors, little pancake ones, like I said, you should have no problems at all. That should work just fine. So with your air hooked up, this knob lifts up and then you can rotate this dial and that changes the air pressure. Now the reason you want to change the air pressure is because you want to match the amount of air coming out the nozzle on the plasma gun so that it matches the material you're using. You know, just like you wouldn't turn up your welder to full blast to weld eighth inch material, uh, you do the same thing for this. You optimize the settings for the material that you're cutting. So this machine consists of a torch assembly. So that's what this is. It has a little guard here. When you pull the trigger on this, what will happen is, is an arc will start. Now this is high frequency and this is also a pilot arc, meaning you don't have to touch the material. Some of them you have to touch the material and then pull it to strike an arc. This one you don't. You can literally pull the trigger midair and the plasma will start shooting out. This lead obviously has a couple wires in it, and then this just has the air that travels through this over to this gun, and that's 13 feet long, so you can get 13 feet away from the machine. Now, I wanna show you what the consumables are because this is what wears out, and specifically, very rarely, if ever, do you wear that out. That'll usually just break from dropping it, but this is what a consumable package is. So it has the centerpiece, that's what, once this wears out, that's kind of what does the cutting. You really can't even see through it, but um, that's what does all the cutting. And this right here is kind of what assists and aids in that. Now, what you do is you try to hold a real close arc or touch it. It doesn't really matter. Um, close arc or touching it is what you want to do. But um, with this one, if you're running it on 220, you're going to use this one. It's a 45 thousandths. It's stamped right on the side. If you're running it on 110, you're just going to take this piece off and put on a 30 thousandths one. And that comes with it. It comes with some of these uh, consumables. How often do these last? It all depends on the quality of your air source. If your air is really dry, these will last for a real long time. If your air is damp, it tends to wear these out quicker. If you uh, let a lot of buildup of slag and stuff get on the end of these, it wears up quicker. Uh, so yeah, it, it all depends on what you're cutting and how you're doing it, but the consumables for this are super cheap. And you can see here, that's the consumable pack. So it comes with, it even comes with a guide uh, that you clip onto your torch head. So it comes with the ceramics, uh, the cutting head, and the little inside piece. And you can see there it is uh, from Yes Welder. And you're looking for an AG60. Those are the parts you're looking for. And you can see right there, 20 bucks. So that's pretty cheap. These would last you a long time, especially if you're a hobby welder. It assembles as easy as this, guys. I mean, it's super simple. You just screw this in here and just snug it up a little bit. You don't gotta go crazy. And then put your drag tip on it. And what makes this as a drag tip is you see on the end how it has like a four-way cross. That allows the molten metal as it's cutting to exit out those channels. So that's what that's all about. And then just put on your ceramic cone that goes over it. This is like a ceramic material. It just shields all the metal parts back here. All right, so we've got our air source plugged in. We've got our plug plugged in here to 220 volt. And oh, I'll tell you one thing guys um, that I had to do. This little plug right here, I don't know what it is, but I had to remove that and, because it was leaking a little bit of air out of it. So it's just like a little grub screw. So I removed it, wrapped some Teflon tape on it and put it back in. Cause I'll tell you what, there's nothing I can't stand more than listening to air leaks while in the workshop. That little hissing sound, oh my God, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It drives me insane. So all my stuff has to be airtight and that one wasn't, but it is now. It was a super simple fix. So anyways, back to it. So this has a bunch of LEDs on it, but I turned the machine off because with the LEDs on, they're so bright you couldn't see it. So um, right here, it has 2T and 4T. Now what that means is, it's just like a TIG welder. On 2T, you press the trigger and hold it and it cuts. When you let off, it stops cutting. On 4T, you pull the trigger and let off, and it stays cutting. Then you press it again and it'll stop cutting. That's what that is. 
This is a power on indicator. This is an over temp indicator. So if it overheats and things are getting too hot, that'll turn on and the machine will just stop working or stop cutting, but the machine fan will continue to run. This one right here is an LED that lets you know that your consumables aren't in right. So maybe they're loose or uh, you don't have them in right. That's what that is. Then what this is, and you can toggle this to actually turn on the air solenoid valve so you can correctly set your air uh, pressure. Now remember I said that it's important you match your air pressure to your work. I'm going to show you how we know how to do that here in a minute. And then this other indicator here says it's a mesh to cut wire mesh and I think what it does is it turns off and on the arc as it senses the mesh but I'm not completely sure. We'll have to get some experiment with that in an upcoming video but all right, so now what you want to know is how do you know what to set your pressure for and what to set your amperage for? Well, it doesn't come with a chart. Fortunately for us, I have one and I'm going to provide you with a link to it and you can use it for your plasma cutter. It doesn't just have to be this model. It can pretty much be any of them and that'll get you really close in the ballpark. So here's the chart, guys. I will hold it here for a second so you can take a look at it and pause it. Unfortunately, YouTube won't allow me to attach a file so that you guys can have a link to this. So what I've done is, is I've put it on my Facebook page and you can click the link down below to that. Just click on the photos tab and once you go to the Facebook page, you can download this chart through the photos. We find eighth inch material, which is right there. And it says eighth inch is 20 amps when we go over and the PSI is 30. Now the reason that this is important guys, because what will happen is, is it's just going to wear out your consumables. Now when I was just talking to you about that, what that means is, is that your consumables, when they start wearing out, they just don't cut as good. It, it doesn't cut as fast. The line might get kind of wavy. Um, it might be like a ratty edge and jagged. It's not like completely perpendicular. It might be angled off at an angle. So when they start wearing out, they just don't cut as good. So try to use, you know, dry air. And uh, if you can keep a little bit of a gap, it will lengthen the life of your consumables. But this will have a drastic effect on your consumables. And like I said, this doesn't have to be just for this machine. This can be for any of your machines. And it will definitely drastically increase the life of your consumables. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Now let's get this thing set up and we'll get cutting. Turn on the switch. The air is already on. It's already plugged in. Now, if we press this solenoid, right, this will activate the solenoid valve so that we can adjust the regulator in the back. As you can see, it's saying like, what, what's that, 30, 40, 50, something like that. So we press that, and it's at about 41. We want it at about 30. So all we'll do is we'll come in the back, raise that up, and we'll start turning it counterclockwise until we're at 30 PSI. That'll optimize the air volume. We press that. I'll reach in back, start turning that valve until it's at 30. There we are right there. I can shut that off and you can see it goes up a little bit. And now so that that doesn't get turned, we just push it down and that locks it in place. Now it says we want to be at 20 amps. 19. And there we are guys. It's that easy. This machine is now optimized. Now this has a little bit of paint on it. So what I'm going to do is just scrape it away. But that's what's great about the pilot arc on this. Is that you don't have to touch the metal or even have uh, good metal contact and the arc will start. So I'm going to use my handy dandy table here and if you want to know how I built this I'll put a link up above but this is all handmade. We built this fabrication table and it is super precise and super inexpensive. So we've got our workpiece clamped down. Now we've got our ground lead or our earth from the plasma cutter. We just got to ground our workpiece. So I'm just going to clamp it there and now we're ready to go. run for a little bit afterwards and that what that does is that's doing it automatically it's cooling down that contact tip so 
look at that. Very little cleanup to do on this. What you can do is just take a chipping hammer. You peel that dross right off. And look at that. It's, it's warm, but it's not hot. Because it cuts so precise and so fast that it doesn't radiate heat throughout the part. You can see how good of a cut that is. You know, if my hand was a little bit steadier, it would have done a lot better job. But um, this is a true testament too about how concentrated and focused the heat is because this is brown paint on this side. And you can see how the paint has even hardly uh, worn back. And if you guys have ever cut metal that's been painted, you'll know that, you know, it'll go way back. Uh, the heat will burn it back and it's really not. So, yeah, pretty slick. I've used other plasma cutters that are of less quality and I can say that this cuts with a lot finer uh, precision. This is a good unit. With our piece roughed out guys, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide our metal one inch pipe over the top and run a slice in it so that this fits halfway in. So that we have weld on both sides. And I think I'm going to come down like an inch and a half. I think that that would look uh, that would look good and that would give this ample rigidity so we don't end up bending it. So I'm just going to put a, I'm just roughing out an inch and a half all the way around like that. And like I said, I'm going to put a slice in it here and then we'll flip it over and do another slice in it there. And just like before, I like to keep everything held down nice and tight and secure. So we're going to clamp it right to the table. Just like that. Then it gives us a nice secure place to put our ground. Now I want this slot to be in the center of this. So what I'm going to do is I'll find the center and it looks like we're at 8 and an 8. So that's going to be 4 and a 16th which is right there. And now I'll just transfer that mark down just so we have a reference and that's our center line. I probably should have held off on marking the center line until I ground all the paint off. So I'll have to go back and do that. But now I'm going to grind off all the paint in the area where we're going to weld on both sides. And then we'll be able to start setting up our welder. Now for abrasives, all I'm using is just a flap wheel from Empire Abrasives. And I'll have links to their stuff down below. If you buy through the link, it's going to save you a little bit of money. It doesn't cost you any more and it'll save you some coin in the end. Now it's time to start welding everything up and I'm going to be using my Fronius Trans Steel 2200 and I'm using it on C25 gas and I'm using 30 thousandths solid wire. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and this will be pretty quick because everything is all pre-set up. <laughs> it's actually set for 125 thousandths so that's what we're welding. We don't even need to change a thing. So let's get going. If you don't want to clean up BBs all over your project, you can spray down your table with just some simple vegetable oil, nothing fancy. This will keep all those little BBs from splattering and sticking to all your stuff. Makes clean up a lot quicker. All right, check it for square. That's square. Looks good. that and we'll flip it over show the other side 
a little warm right now. There, that's that. That's gonna work just fine. So you don't wanna like stomp your foot into the ground here. So you're gonna wanna have, you know, something to put your foot on so you don't cut into your shoe. So probably like some flat plate on either side. And then we'll cut the handle off a little bit, maybe like here, and use the scrap for a T. Make like a T handle out of it. I think that'll work great. Made a mark at eight inches right here. Now I'm just gonna cut it off with my portable bandsaw stand that I made. Now this is gonna go on top of this like that to make like a little T handle, a place you can grab onto. Now I could probably just stick it on there like that and fill that little gap, but maybe the better thing to do would be to like fish mouth this out a little bit so that fits in there a little better. And that's what we're gonna do. There, that's a little better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Now I'll just clamp this down to the table. Yeah, there's that. So now what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of a ledge on top of this so when you, you know, stomping down with your boot on top of this, pushing it through the soil, that it doesn't cut into your shoe. So part of that, I want to like contour this piece over here to fit around this tube. So what that's going to involve is we're going to have to cut like a half moon out of this so it fits nice and tight against this tube. The way I'll do that is I'll just set it up there and just use the tube itself as a template. And that's that shape. And then I can just take the plasma cutter and cut it out. Now we got both of these pieces made and you can see how they're kind of like fish mouthed out and it'll go around the pipe. It'll be just like that so when you step on this to shove it into the ground it's not going to dig into your foot. It's really important when you're MIG welding to grind back any mill scale or any paint. It's not as forgiving as other processes. Now if this was stick welding you have a tendency, you, it's a little more forgiving uh, it, and it will burn through a little bit of light rust and burn through some paint. But um, with MIG welding, you want to do the best you can to get everything clean uh, just because it has a tendency, you can do a nice looking bead and still have what's considered a cold weld where there isn't a deep fusion. So that's why you want to make sure that you prep, prep your joints really good, especially when MIG welding. So I'm just going to take off this little bit of light paint so we can weld those on. I'll just hold this up here, kind of just rough it out to what I think looks pretty even and consistent. Now that I've got these little push plates all tacked on there, now I can just completely weld them out.
Now we could leave these ends open, but I think that that would look kind of amateurish. So let's close them off. It's simple to do, and we'll just trace it out and cut them with a plasma cutter. All right, give everything a quick spray down. Keep all the spatter at bay. You, what you see smoking is I just made this little tool. Uh, it's just this little pad to help hold this down. All it is is just a piece of angle iron with a flat plate welded on it. That way this clamp can push down flat. And I'll have it for other projects as well. Now what we'll do after we weld this on guys, we'll grind this all down, make it nice and smooth so it's kind of like rounded on the outside edges so it feels good in your hands. And this is all that clamp is guys. I just threw some scrap metal together. You can see. So that way it'll just support the round stock when it's sitting on the bench. And there we are guys. So now it's just time to clean up everything. I'm going to smooth all this up. Uh, clean up these welds, the ones that you'd be touching by your hands, and then we'll just deburr everything, and then we'll put a nice sharp point on that, and then we'll take it and see how it works. Here it is guys, I just wanted to show you, I just put a quick coat of paint on it. I just think it looks better. It's, you know, obviously not going to last, it's going to wear off like anything else, but I just kind of wanted to show you some close-up details with it all painted, so. Yeah, I got it all sharpened on the edge. I didn't go crazy sharp, uh, just because, I mean, you can't quite shave in it, but, you know, it's sharp enough that it'll cut grass and sod, and that's what it needs to do, so. Let's go try it out. Sorry for all the wind guys, hopefully it's not too noisy, but it's brutal. So what this tool is designed to do is that'll put like a real crisp edge along this planter bed. You can see kind of how the bed all meals into the grass. Well, the way this works is you just find an edge or make an edge that you want and just push it into the ground like that. And what that does is that makes a nice cut line in the ground and then you just remove remove that piece of soil and you just go along wherever you want it that's how that works so then you remove this section right here you know then what that would do is that would make a nice you know defined edge for your landscaping border so that's what that tool is this is kind of the best part about doing a project guys is like the satisfaction of knowing that you did it you know and the tool that you could have bought in the store was you know 40 bucks and it definitely wasn't this heavy duty do that with a regular lawn edger you'll destroy it listen to that you could chop wood with this and it's not that heavy it's no heavier than a probably commercial one that you'd buy the store-bought ones, I could take that edge right there and bend it by hand. It would, it would flex. This one's not flexing at all, so. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you can check me out on Facebook and on Instagram. New videos every Friday, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, go ahead and click the links down below. And as far as that plasma cutter, I was able to arrange a discount with the manufacturer. Click the link down below, and I'll also include a promo code for 10% off. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Stay safe, take care, like, comment, subscribe. Bye.